Probably Go ahead. I now call to order the New Carlisle Council meeting Monday, June 4th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berger. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. All present. Right, we have our invocation. I can have mine standing uh, with Council Member. Sorry, Vice Mayor Lindsay. Have your heads, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in Jesus Christ's precious name. We ask you to guide this council on all decisions made for the benefit of this city, to protect our firefighters, our police department, and the people, our military, Father. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do the pledge here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Action on the minutes, please. So moved. Second. You started. I thought so. Um, Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? <clears throat> Mr. Lighting? Yes. Minutes accepted, 7 0. <clears throat> Communications done tonight. Mm -hmm. City Manager's report. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of public. I'd like to share with you the City Manager's report. A uh, planning board meeting was held on May 30th at the Smith Park Shelter House, which is here. We discussed the Twin Creeks Covenants. The planning board did make a recommendation to city council. Uh, legislation will be introduced to council on 618, which is the next council meeting. Cruiser update. Uh, one patrol be uh, vehicle we found bed bugs in it is cleaned back in service. Uh, one, another patrol vehicle, uh, which is Deputy Islander's car, is having some issues with the front vent not blowing out AC. Um, so that is in service still, but we will be getting that uh, fixed when the other cars, uh, we have a healthy stock to send it off. Another for patrol vehicles, the lifters are out and is currently in the shop being serviced. And our new patrol vehicle was picked up at the county garage and I think it was put in on service on 6-1. Keep Clark County Beautiful Flower Grant. Uh, city was awarded a $300 grant to buy flowers to plant in the city. Um, lucky for us, when we went to shop for that $300, the company had a 50% off sale, so we actually got $600 worth of flowers to plant in the city. Um, we will plant in various places around the city. Me and Kathy Marshall did drive around last week looking for a location. We did secure those, and I will be updating Mr. Fisco on Wednesday of uh, where we're going to plant those. Finance director job opening. Uh, selection has been made. She will be introduced to council at the next council meeting. Council will need to have that final approval before she does officially start. Memorial Day Walk 2018. Thanks to all the, uh, everyone who contributed and or donated for the event. It was a great event again for the, I don't know how many years we've been doing it, but quite some time. Uh, and thank you for the council members who, who did show up and participate. Uh, city manager conferences. I have a conference on Friday, June 8th. It's the 2018 OML, which is a Ohio Municipal League uh, Summer Regional Conference. That is in Mason. And then actually the following week, I will be in Sandusky for the Public Financers Training uh, Conference up there as well. I will be taking the place of Ms. Harris so we can get the training credit hours. I'm going ahead and skip the charter enforcement. I'll get to that here in one second. Health stats are attached. And we had an issue with the Purple Heart Signs and Council. I know you guys have one of these in color in your, in your packets. The rest of the guys, I didn't put color in there. Uh, this was the original design we thought we were gonna get, this white one here. However, when the PDF was rendering, it actually came out to be this Purple Heart one with the purple border on it. So I need a motion to approve from Council to allow me to go ahead and get the one with the purple on it opposed to the white. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Johnson. I move to go with the uh, purple, the one that they did the blueprint on, or the uh, PDF on. All right. So for the purple heart. 
Mr. Fox. <clears throat> Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsey? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Pop? Yes. And back to the charter enforcement on the city manager report for that. I will have to turn it over to our law director. Before we start, we have one question from Mr. Lowry. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Bridge, just real quick, back on the Memorial Day walk, if, yep. you know, I just kind of wanted some opinion on, on it from council. I love the Memorial Day walk. I've walked that for many years. But it's really sad the attendance has really dropped off. Uh, I know that a lot of people that do over the years have participated. It's a, it's a long walk for people who are, you know, a little bit older. Um, I didn't know if, if you think if council thought that maybe we should try another approach as far as maybe just better advertising it or maybe just changing it to a uh, I mean, these are just ideas to change it just to a service that way people don't feel they have to walk they could maybe just drive to the, well, I, you know, I don't know just any ideas really because it's it was really sad to see the lack of participation in that. And, it, and i know years ago that it was a lot bigger so i just i don't know if anybody had any ideas on how to boost it and get it going again mr mayor mr Lindsay. Uh, I have a question on what Mr. Larry says. Is this actually a city event, or is this done by somebody else? I don't know. Who no, puts this on? It's a city event. It's a city event? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And if I can inter intervene real quick. Um, a lot of people have commented, and I think Mr. Lindsay did last year, too, about maybe meeting at the CBS Rite Aid area downtown and just doing that walk. Because it is, and it's, if it's a hot day, you know, we got some older participants that just can't do that walk because it it's physically draining um, so i've heard that scenario a lot let's just meet at, at right aid cbs and do that walk short walk from downtown into our cemetery it'll probably take 10 minutes of that i don't know maybe i'm sorry go ahead that's still about a mile isn't it and i thought the whole walk was like two or two and a half miles i'm, I'm not really sure from, probably from how a mile or a little the IGA, under, whatever they call it now yeah it's probably about a mile or a little under yeah. i don't know maybe Towards the winter or the early spring, you could, you know, put a little, you know, feeler out there on, on social media on the city's page and just kind of see some, maybe come up with a couple of suggestions and see what people think. Yeah, that's a good point. I do a poll. On I mean, it, it may just simply need more, you know, advertising. I don't know. Sure. Just some thoughts. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Have you ever thought about changing the time, like making it nine instead of noon, or is this something we should always keep at noon? That'd be cooler at nine, probably. I, I, I know for us with uh, with the kids, I mean, I could take the old, the two older ones, but the baby, I mean, noon's either eating or sleeping, so sure. maybe 9 a.m. might be something we look into. Sure. Yeah. Counts on anything else? <clears throat> Mr. Bridge, back to you. And for the charter enforcement for it, um, I will have to turn it over to Lynette Dinkler, who is our wall director. With regard to the charter, there have been issues with the CCW uh, drafting. There is an inconsistency with the. Okay. Oh, you can I'm going to try to be loud. I'll be louder. Hopefully, you'll tell me if I'm too loud. With regard to the charter, I could. there were issues with regard to the drafting of a piece of legislation that uh, two council members desired. And in working on that, I discovered a, an inconsistency in uh, the uh, rules of council and the charter. And so we have corrected that. That has been on the books for a very long time, that uh, inadvertent oversight. And so uh, predates, I don't know how many law directors. So uh, fortunately, everything else that my office has done was all passed by council. I don't foresee that council uh, at least that I know, plans on bringing the CCW legislation uh, to vote because it seems to be uh, stymied. So 
I'm going to tally up the amount of money that was spent for research and drafting, and that will be returned to the city so that there is no violation of the city's charter because I don't want anything that my office is doing to bring about any inconsistency with the charter. So that's my report. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And that is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions? Mr. Lowry. No. Mr. Oh. Mighty. Oh, my goodness. Oh, sorry, I didn't raise my hand. Mr. Stinkler, thank you for uh, returning that money. And so, so we can move on with this. That was mighty big of you, and I know I, I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, for the city manager, I assume, uh, the vehicles that are out of service and with bed bugs, is it any of the new ones? It was. It was actually one of the first new SUVs we got, the 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the lifters? Is that in an older one? And it's in our Dodge okay. Charger. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Sure. Council, anything else? No. All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. So comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. Hi, I'm Ron Maneman, 317 North Adams Street. I am here to ask council to do something about noise, especially in neighborhoods, residential neighborhoods during the day. Um, I called and talked with Randy for quite a while today. He looked up um, the ordinances for me, and I think we're in agreement that there's really not anything that applies. It's pretty much up to the um, deputy's discretion. Um, there's been two entities in my neighborhood in the last three to five years that have blared music over um, microphones, loudspeaker systems for hours at end. Hours and hours and hours at end during the day. Um, Howie called one of these entities for me a couple of years ago. Um, they didn't respond very well, but he got their attention. So that when I unfortunately had to threaten them with the next level of activity I would be taking, they were not happy. I got yelled at. But um, over time, it has improved quite a bit with that one entity. The second entity is a private residence. Deputies were there twice on Saturday night. Um, they turned the sound down a little bit, and when the deputy left, they turned it right back up. They had been warned that at 10 o'clock they were to be done. The deputy was able to get there um, after 10 o'clock on Saturday. They were still going strong. They've been advised numerous times. And there is not anything in the city charter that says what the limit is on how far the noise can go. Um, until you get to 10 o'clock at night. These folks have two to three feet tall speakers in their backyard, hooked up to amplifiers and microphones, and they quote unquote have birthday parties in their backyard. Have all the parties you want, great. You know, have company, have people over. I can't have people over because of what they're doing. I can't sit in my own yard. I go in my house, I hear it. I close the doors and the windows and turn on the air conditioning, I hear it. I turn on the TV, I hear it. I'm at my wit's end. Something has to be done. This is in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Nobody else is doing it. Deputies have gone and talked with them multiple times over the years. Deputies have told me at times that they have gone from a complaint that I was not the one that called. So I know somebody else is calling. It's not just me. Deputies have gone and stopped um, just because there was no complaint, but they heard it while they were on patrol. So I'm here to ask council to do something about an ordinance that has some type of restrictions that is enforceable by a deputy in residential neighborhoods during the day. Thanks so much, council. Mr. Cobb. 
Would that not be an ordinance change instead of a charter? Yes. We would need ordinance change. Be ordinance. Pardon? It would be an ordinance. Maybe we've got to address that to the law director? Uh, that would be a uh, yes. motion of council to have the uh, ordinance put in place to have limits on sound during the day. Well, I'd like make, make, make the motion that we do put a restriction on the music throughout the day and late evening. Yeah. Second. Mm -hmm. Before we continue, Mrs. Dinkler, do you have something to say? Do we have a nuisance? Let me do some, yeah. We do have an ordinance store. It's like Ms. Manneman came in. Thank you for coming today. Um, it says like 25 feet. So if you're having a backyard party and you can hear the music 25 feet away, it's in violation from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. So you got to look at this from two parts. You have to look at the time restriction, which is there for 10 p to 7 a. Then you also have to look at the distance to where you want people to not be able to hear the music from. You know, you can have a, a, a quick fix to where you just take out the 10 and put 24 hours a day and still leave that 25 foot radius. But I was talking to Ms. Manum about this today too, is the problem with us is we're all packed in here like sardines. So if it's 25 feet, then that could be two houses down. They're still hearing the music. Um, Ms. Manum had suggested that you can only hear it past your own front yard, your own par parcels. That's gonna be up for council to decide. Um, I can't sit there and say, you know, it's going to be this and this council maybe a work session would be good for this i don't know if it warrants a whole work session because i don't know how much goes into it it's just how does this council want me to proceed do you want a distance restriction definitely the time restriction is going to be on there because another component of this is we got people who work third shift and there's a lot of people who are being affected by this who just don't say anything because they don't want they don't want the attention so i think we have to encompass all of our residents and all their work schedules and, and you know i'll leave it up to council to tell me how to proceed with this we can draft some legislation. I'll have Lynette start looking into it and see if there's any conflicts with maybe state law. I don't know if there would be some decibel restrictions. And then we'll have to put it back in front of council. All right. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor, thank you, Mr. Mayor. How, just off the top of your head, Mr. Bridge and, and Ms. Tinkler, how complex will that get as far as legally? You know, can you restrict it to music only? I mean, can someone say, okay, you've got this noise restriction, but I can, I'll, you know, he's breaking the law because I can hear his bomb over three houses down. It's under our code. I think it's 648. It's called peace disturbances. And you're right. There are some things, the reference we're talking about is radios, um, CD players and stuff like that. There's stuff in there for cars. Um, ATVs in the city limits are 25 feet opposed to that, uh, no, it's 50 feet for ATV. 50, 50 feet for ATVs, 25, 25 feet, feet after decibels. 10 o'clock. So, I mean, it, what, we, what I invite council to do is go home tonight, and, or tomorrow morning, what I'll do is I'll email you guys 648, which is peace disturbances. You guys can start reviewing that and maybe give me some guidance um, at the next council mm meeting. -hmm. Get some things. Could we see, you know, well, I guess we could look at ourselves. So, I was just curious what other, you know, what kind of cities our size do in the same situation. So sure, mm -hmm. it seems like it's all standard anywhere you go for the most part. Yeah, but with the microphone, that's pretty extreme. Yeah, that's it's okay. it's yeah. it's at least um, I would say uh, seventy five feet. Did we estimate yeah. probably? It, it, it's at least seventy five feet from their property to my house. Mr. Cook. Since later on in the meeting, I'm going to call for a work session on 611 and 625. Would it be apropos to put this on the agenda for 611 at a work session? Mm -hmm. 611, 625? Mm -hmm. Two. 611 and 625 mm -hmm. for two work sessions and put this on the agenda for that work session. And while I'm at it, I'd like to add, I, I think there should be some type of fines or penalties attached to this. When, when, they're, when it's the same property that's repeatedly, that they've been informed over a period of two to three years, and, and they've you know, previously been brought to their attention and they willfully disregard, they're, they're, they need to get hit in the po pocketbook for that. I think that would be a valuable addition to possibly the ordinance. Take a total look at it. I'd even like to see some type of escalation. They get fined 
twice within 90 days or something, and then the third time, it's worse than a fine, whatever that would be. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is on 625 have a work session is what Mr. Cook will motion for and other business, correct, is what you're saying? Well, I think we can put that in with uh, the other items that I've got on 611 and okay. address all of them at the same time. All right. So that's 611. Uh, if the council is all available, we will have a work session to discuss this. I don't. I won't be in town for the 11th, so I don't know if that changes anything. And I don't have availability on the 18th either on that Monday evening. But I'll be here for the 25th. Um, also, 611. I have vacation Bible school in the evenings, so I will not be able to attend either. So would you want to wait to the 25th, then, Mr. Cook? Well, we All right, make it 625, but <laughs> it'll be, is, is, is it'll the, be gone, I know. Maybe we do a conference call. We could do this. Is the public invited to work sessions? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Right. I think we'll figure that out in other business. So, thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? I'll make that in there. Mr. Oh, Mrs. McKenzie, go ahead. <clears throat> uh, my name is Seven. Becky McKenzie. I'm at 521 Hamilton. Um, I know that the discussion earlier had been that the CCW ordinance um, probably wasn't going forward, um, but I did submit a request for the string of emails. Would I still be able to receive those emails even though it's not an ongoing ordinance that's being worked on? Even though I have no Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to check on that. I wasn't for sure. Um, and then at the last meeting, um, everyone talked about how they were going to start being nice to each other and not being inappropriate in correspondence or um, anything else like that. Has anything else happened since the last time that everybody said that they weren't going to act childishly? I, I, for, I can speak for myself, not from myself. I believe I haven't said anything inappropriate for myself. I can't speak for others. I think they should speak for themselves. You want to go down the line or? <laughs> they they want to answer. Oh, I mean, it's up to their, them to answer. So yeah. each individual member, I mean, I don't think I've said anything inappropriate via Communication. Mr. Shamming, no. you? As far as I know, I've got a clean slate, Becky. I have not said anything inappropriate, no. I've answered, Mr. Lindsay. I don't believe I have either. <clears throat> Bill, I know you haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, matter of fact, <laughs> if I have, I greatly appreciate the fact somebody calling it to my attention. But uh, very seldom. Do I use the email in order to uh, respond to the officials or the law? Gotcha. You weren't here last time, so. <laughs> your your computer's broke, so you have an option. I know I can. <laughs> um, and then I wanted to check and see where we're at with the parks and rec rules and if they've been submitted for review. I can't hear what you said. Will you speak up, please? Yeah, um, to check on the parks and rec rules, if they had been submitted for review. I don't believe they yet have. Uh, I know Randy and I have spoke about it. I don't think we ever actually had that meeting to go through the parks and recreation rules. Those are with me. Those are with Lynette. Oh, OK. Good. OK, great. All right. I think that's it. I think it's not just McKinsey. McKinsey. Any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Graham. Dale Grimm, 114 South Main Street, and I hadn't planned on saying anything, but after Mr. Lowry made his comment about the uh, Memorial Day walk, it's not just here. Uh, Medway has a parade on uh, the same day. It was nothing to what it has been in the past. Uh, Northampton canceled theirs. Enon's parade was substantially smaller than it than Did they the past. do? I'm sorry, Dale. And, and that's sad. Go ahead. Do there, I've never been to theirs before. Are there similar setups as ours? Do they do a long walk and then a service? Uh, Medway, they start at the school, go through the traffic light, and then out to the uh, cemetery okay. on Lower Valley. At Enon, they start at Indian Valley School, go 
go through town and then turn right on Main Street and end up at the cemetery. And both have a, uh, a service at the cemetery. But it's both the units in the parades and the number of spectators that was down substantially this year. Can't, can't blame it on the weather. It was a nice day both days. No rain. Uh, but it's, it's everywhere, and that's, that's a sad commentary. It is. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Council. Any other comments from members of the public? Hearing none. Uh, committee reports, there are none tonight. And resolutions. Mrs. Verner. Yeah. Resolution 18-09R, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into any and all agreements with the Board of Clark County Commissioners for the 2018 roadway resurfacing contract. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cook. I make a motion that we adopt resolution 18-09. Second. And an explanation of this resolution, this is when we go in with the county uh, to get more, more, more bang for your buck to get our bids so we can resurface our uh, roadways. Uh, Mr. Kitko, if you have anything to add to that, please do. Uh, no, I just, other than the streets of being Greenheart, White Pine, and Furwood. Council, any comments, questions, or concerns? Nope. Mrs. Burke? <coughs> Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Accepted 7 0. And Ms. Burner, will you read our ordinances for us, please? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 18 11, introduction, public hearing, and introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 618. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the New Carlisle Community Garden. Okay. And then other business, do you mind reading that? Congressman Warren Davidson will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. The Crime Watch meeting will take place June 13th, 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. All right, and Council, anything else from other business? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cook. A couple of things. I guess I've been shot down on the workstation for the 11th, so I guess the 25th at 7 o'clock, if that meets with everybody's approval. Uh, Mr. Shammy can't be there. Is there, any other, is there any days that we all would be able to be at? I can get any day. I mean, does it have to be a Monday for you, Mr. Cook? Or? No, it does not have to be a Monday. Mr. Cook, would you like me present? Do you, do you want me present? Yes, okay. please. Um, the 18th, I have a prior engagement I can't get out of. For the remainder of the week, I'm good to go. And then all next week, I'll be in that conference. Okay. So the 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, I'm good. 19th. Does the 19th work for everybody? The 19th, does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fine with that. The 19th for. Oh, you leave the 19th? State, yeah. Oh. Through the 28th. Through the 28th. Oh, we might not be able to get you in then if, if Mr. Cook wants it. Sooner rather than later. I mean, would you be opposed to July, Mr. Cook? July 3rd. Ooh. If we have to do it then, that's bad. I'd prefer to get these out of the way. Morning. Mm -hmm. I'd prefer not to, but if that's what it takes. <laughs> Saturday afternoon. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I know Mr. Lighty has uh, Ooh. kids at baseball. So. Yeah. It's just a tough, it's going to be tough for any of us. Yeah, I mean, we, we might, we yeah, might as well like come to the conclusion that maybe not all of us can be yeah, there. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, most of us are just a phone call away seven. or, you know, before we vote on anything. Sorry. Thursday. Thursday. Seven. At seven. This Thursday? This coming Thursday. Mr. Cook, did you say what this is about? It's about the grass this stuff Thursday. we've been talking about. I've got that. <laughs> I want to address the grass ordinance. I want to address the peddler, peddler ordinance. It's mine. And apparently Mrs. Let's Manaman. So Sound ordinance. Okay. So do you want to do the 25th and report back to Mr. Shammy? Yeah, yeah, just report back to him. Is that all right? What day are we doing? The 25th. Are you okay with that? Do you want to say July 9th? <coughs> you can do July 9th or is that too far out? I can do July 9th. Can you do July 9th? <laughs> Bridge? 
Ooh, probably. Getting way into the future. What day is it on? Monday? Yeah, we're way out there. I got a couple other than Okay. Yeah? All right. Is it July 9th? No, no. All right. July the 9th? So we we'll need a motion and a second to vote to approve that. I'll make the motion for July 9th. Second. Second. Second with Mr. Lowry. All right. July 9th. Okay. What time is that? That's 7 p.m. Okay. Um, let me see if I can get the shoulder house a little bit more quick. Any uh, council, any comments? No. Uh, Mrs. Berner, all the roll. Yes. Mr. Shamey? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? <coughs> yes. Except it's 7 0. Mr. Cook has a few more things. Yes. Mr. Cook? Also, apparently, uh, the Green River Ordinance, for those of you who don't know what the Green River Ordinance is, that is the ordinance that our peddlers must sign up at the city hall, get a permit, and make their rounds around town. In confronting two individuals on Saturday afternoon, they, of course, claimed they didn't know about the ordinance. At one time, the city had signs at each of the entrance proclaiming us to be a Green River Ordinance City. I would like to see those signs replaced if we don't have them. That would alert them to the fact that they need to permit, even though they may claim they don't know about it. So that does away with that excuse. Council, Mr. Maurer. Mighty. I've been called the wrong one. I've been called worse. Um, yeah. What I'm thinking of is speaking of ordinances and uh, permits. How many times, if, a, if there's a food vendor in New Carlisle, do they have to get multiple permits if they're at different locations throughout the year, or do they just get one permit and that's good throughout the year? Our like our food truck. Mm -hmm. They're usually they're usually stationary once they get sat for the year, like the one at Marathon stays there if they want to move locations like look like uh let's say there's a car show as long as there's no safety issues where you usually don't say anything they have their permit from the county they have them for us to operate within the city limits okay that's what i was wondering that's awesome yeah. that's actually a really good question i never actually thought about when we were looking into that order. Well, i was actually talking to uh luke putterball about it so, yeah so. But <laughs> okay. and Cook, we're trying to get some of the uh talk about having one of the taco guys come down for the fireworks show mm -hmm. and stuff like that yeah so. awesome love that idea yeah. very good council anything else about the sales people Mm -hmm. You're talking about the sales Yeah. Oh, Mr. Lowry. That's a complete different. Oh. He's talking about Mr. Lowry. Did you have something, Bill? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right, well, I guess I get the duty of, of dealing with this tonight or bringing it up, unfortunately. Miss um, Dinkler, I'm allowed to bring up our conversations today and what took. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Today, um, I was contacted by our city attorney, and I think everyone on council was contacted by our city attorney of some issues brought up it about our forum meetings. Just so, just so the correct, public correct. knows that we did not violate some right one on ones. Two, you know, and. We had, you know, we we had a couple individual meetings up up the city uh, building, council or council. Thank you, wall director, and um, went over a few things. And some of the things that we had to go over was things that were a uh, violation of the, of the city of New Carlisle's charter um, regarding. I'll, I'll just start on the first one with our mayor. Uh, yep. And I'm just I'm, I'm going slow. I'm just trying to figure out how to, to go through this and sound as, as professional as possible. I can address this if you'd like me to directly. Uh, uh, let me finish. Okay, so what it boils down to is, is, is information I was handed today, along with I think everyone else on council, was that uh, a violation of the city charter by the mayor was that, and I'm just giving what I've been given and shown is that the mayor has not paid city taxes uh, since the 2012 calendar year. 
I would like to address that if you don't mind. We want to go point by point. You say file. No, I said pay. File. File. I have paid. Okay. And everything has been added. So, well, I'll let you go ahead. Uh, I have paid all of uh, my uh, taxes. I actually said I could find quickly off the top of my head, find my uh, local income tax here for the city. I paid $520.28 uh, this is just last year, and then another $72. Uh, I actually reached out to my accountant, and I'm having this addressed, and I'm meeting with her on Thursday, and we will uh, fix this issue. I didn't know that was, uh, to my knowledge, I, I, I mean, I did hear from Mrs. Dinkler today that Randy did inform me, but I do not remember that to, off the top of my head. But I will have this addressed, and it will be fixed. Uh, so I will make sure that the filing is correct, but I have never missed a single penny owed to the city. I have to do my taxes. I just like to make sure that's correct. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Lighting, yes. And there's, so, never, and there's no allegation about whether or not they've been paid or not. That, that's what I want to make clear, is that it was that there was a mismatch yes, between... And there's no allegation with regard to that, because there's no information available yes. with regard to that. But I had... Else. It's just with regard to filing. Yes. And there's a separate obligation for filing under the city code. Yes, and I will make sure that that is corrected. Ms. And there was... Yes. Mr. White. So, from what we heard today, you know, the issue is that there was no filing from... 2012 to the present. There's for 2012. For 2012, for 2012, 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Yeah. So everyone up here who has filed their taxes, and you two, know. And two reminder notices. And two reminders, no and it wasn't done. I guess my question would be, if you had two reminders, why was it not done? I don't remember getting the reminders off the top of my head, like I said, but I will make sure that this, after Mrs. Dinklage brought this up, I will, it will be corrected. I already called my client and said, hey, let's get this thing uh, worked out and fixed. Mr. Bridge, do you remember handing him a reminder? I'm not trying to get in the middle of this. Okay. I'm just trying to do my job. Um, I ain't going to. Um, one was given to him right there where Mr. Shammy is sitting, and yep. then one was mailed to his house, as well as any other city employee <coughs> who was having tax issues. I personally don't remember getting any of those, but I will, like I said, it will be corrected very shortly. Mr. Lott. Mr. Mayor, so, okay, so we're saying that there's no filing shown from 2012 on, correct? 2013 on. 2013 on. So the filings are made in 2013 for tax year 2012, and then it just continues on through 2017. In my, you know, assessment, I'm assuming if, if it's not filed, it's not paid. Would that be correct? No, that's incorrect. There's a separate obligation mm -hmm. under the tax code for filing and a separate obligation for paying. Each one of them constitutes a first degree misdemeanor if it's not done. And so the issue was brought under my mandatory duty to report under my code of professional uh, responsibility to council because the city is engaging at this time in its enforcement for prosecution against all citizens. And so council needed to be made aware of it and for no other reason. So all citizens will be treated alike, including councils of uh, members of council, including employees, including citizens. And at this time, then that would include charter enforcement for the city to be, for the council to be aware of. So 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17 tax years, which would be taxes owed for 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 but they haven't paid. Okay, so. So not filing is, according to this, a charter violation and is punishable by, by law. Yes. And okay. that constitutes misconduct under your charter. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Saul, were you finished? 
Uh, for now, yes. And it violates the tax code, which is a, which is alleged criminal conduct. I guess what we need to ask ourselves, everyone on council, is do we condone misconduct behavior? And this, we, this has been brought to our attention, not just this, but other types of misconduct behavior. So we need to really ask ourselves, are we the kind of people that's going to allow this? And not, I mean, that's just not this particular situation. I mean, there's been things that we have not brought to light. And, you know, we have shown grace and time and time again, we've asked them to show grace. We haven't always seen it. So what we have here is an opportunity to really decide what we think is best. You know, what it is is a violation to a charter. Are we going to hold them accountable or are we not? Does he need to show, excuse me, does he need to show proof that he has or he hasn't? I mean, does he? Has or hasn't filed? <clears throat> Correct. I've confirmed that he has not filed through our tax administrator and through the third party that the city uses before bringing this to light. And I've also obtained an opinion from the Ohio Ethics Commission as to how to handle this situation, which each of you um, have been given, uh, and I've given a copy of that ethics opinion to um, representation for Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Lindsay. I know uh, back in the 80s, I had an accountant that had power of attorney to file my taxes. When I was going to buy a house, I didn't have my tax return. I called the IRS. They sent me a very nice letter from them and the state and the city that I lived at that time that uh, hmm, you didn't file. Uh, that was directly on her. That was her responsibility to file those. Uh, since then, I do my own taxes, or I don't give anybody the power of attorney to file those. If his accountant had that authority, then I would say it was on whoever the accountant is. And I would definitely have a problem with that accountant because I fired mine and he, found, he wound up in prison. So. No, because he didn't file my return because he torched his house with mine and 300 other people's returns in it. So uh, I think as long as this is taken care of uh, sooner than later, that I, I just don't know. Okay. May Mr. Lighty. Um, Mr. Shammy, do you condone misconduct behavior? No. Mr. Lowry, do you condone misconduct behavior? No. Mr. Lindsay, do you condone misconduct behavior? Not, uh, no, I'd have to say no. Mr. Cook, do you condone misconduct behavior? No. Mr. Cobb? No. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I was wondering. It seems like we're all in agreement of this. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Okay, well, here's something that, that instantly crossed my mind as soon as, this, as soon as I heard this. You know, tax mistakes happen all the time, okay? They, I mean, everyone has kids, two, three jobs, and, you know, it's a busy lifestyle. It happens. It, it, it's happened to every single one of us. But the first thing I thought was, is, you know, five years. That's, that's a lot of, that's five years. I mean, if it was one or two years and, you know, Someone had three jobs and three young kids and uh, you know a household and was working crazy. I, I get it, but that's that's a long time. That is a long time to, to see a mistake and not notice it or not get any attention to it. Um, it's it is what it is. I think. I mean, you know, it. it's. Do we want to make a motion to remove the mayor? Council? Sure, 
anything else, Mr. Lighty or Lowry? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. I will make the motion to remove the mayor for misconduct of uh, the lack of, you know, the charter violation amongst legal laws against our own charter. Attack and tax law. Second. All right. Discussion? No nope, hearing none. Mrs. Burner. And if Mr. Lowry. If I may, I, if I'm remembering the charter correctly, we don't actually need a second. It just starts the process. If I'm correct, I read it not long ago. I'm not saying it doesn't go to a vote, but it doesn't go to vote tonight. It, uh, it, it's, a, it's a motion, and then a motion. We got a mo We got a motion. We got a second. And then what did you made a motion to what? Oh, I said no. discussion. You want discussion? Okay. No, I just asked if there was discussion from the council, like on every motion. Got a motion, we got a second, and then what did he even say? He said discussion. He said discussion, asking if we discuss. Do, we, do they discuss? Discussion. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lauer. If I'm cor correct, Bill, I don't have it from that. Call, no, it's like you call for the vote. Okay. You, well. you got your, your motion, your second. Don't you usually have your vote. I would say the ordinance is completely different. We do motion second discussion, but I think it's different if you're removed. Hang on, I vote to remove someone. Bill, do you have it? I know rules. The last time I read it, I thought it said you make a motion, and then any discussion, and then the individual can ask for a hearing, then a hearing, and then the vote okay, after hold the hearing. On for a second. Mr. Cook, 408C. Procedure to remove a member shall start. Okay, hold on. For a second. Yeah, it's different if you try to remove somebody. Procedure to remove a council member shall start. <laughs> the procedure to remove a council member shall start with a motion to do so made by a council member at a regular meeting. The motion shall state the basis for removal as prescribed in section 408. The member so charged shall be given a hearing if requested to hear the relevant evidence and to provide the opportunity for evidence to be presented on behalf of the member. Following such a hearing, council shall within 30 days vote whether to declare the member's office as forfeited and vacant with five affirmative votes necessary for such declaration. So technically, he's he's entitled to a hearing. And right, that's I what I was saying. I don't think there's any motion or vote made at this point. Right, that's what I was saying. That's correct. Yeah. Let's see what our legal counsel has to say first before we have to. Okay, so the what is required is we have a motion of a council member, and that motion is made under the forfeiture of office section, and you need to state the grounds under. Or be in this case it would be as in this case it would be has engaged in misconduct which is section B3 and so that's what you need to state in your motion Mr. Lowry B3 correct has engaged in misconduct and then there's no vote because then it moves on to the hearing where evidence is presented. And then if there is an affirmative vote of five council members, then there's forfeiture of office. Okay. So, okay. I, 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 so you need to make your motion under four B, under uh, B3. B3. 408B. Yeah. Under misconduct okay. of office. So, okay, again, so I make a motion. Yeah, 4.08. Make a motion under the charter 4.08B3. Okay. 
I make a motion under our charter rules, section 4.08B, which is. Somebody write it down. I got it wrote down. <laughs> 4.08B3. Okay. Is that what you said? Gotcha. 4.08B3, forfeiture of office due to misconduct. Uh, as far as our charter, tax laws. In the city of New Carolina. Any other business council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mighty. And Mrs. Dinkler, remind me of what we need to do if we want to discuss uh, Mr. Lindsay's topic. We need to uh, make a motion to set aside attorney privilege and executive session. And I make a motion to set aside attorney privilege and executive attorney client privilege. Attorney client privilege in executive session. Limited waiver. Limited waiver. That's attorney just a limited client waiver. I like to make a motion to set aside limited waiver attorney client privilege. Second. Okay. And executive session. And executive session. Second. Second. So we declaring executive session or? No, because we did. make something public on executive session. We're making something public right. from Good deal. I just wanted to make sure. Mrs. Byrne, will you call the roll, please? Okay. Mr. Chammy. No. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. Mayor Reynolds. No. Mr. Light. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. So the vote fails. <clears throat> three to three, correct? Two to three. Three to three. Three to three, it's tied. Yes. Good point. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Okay, first off, we just, Mr. Okay. I'm pretty upset now, okay? Look, we just talked about misconduct. Everyone up here said they didn't stand for it. Now we want to bring something out, okay, that you should be thoroughly upset about if they don't vote to talk about it because it is flat out breaking laws of our choice. It is that simple. You know, I don't know what the issue is here. I mean, uh, we just went down the line, Mr. Chammy. You said you, you, you don't condone the kind of activity which we've been given. And this is a chance that as taxpayers and the people that have voted on us to, to represent the city properly and in the right light, I think it needs to be thought about being re-voted. Mr. Mayor, third light. Um, earlier in comments in the public, I was asked if there was any other issues that happened, and uh, there were, but we're not allowed to talk about it. So that that's it. Are we not allowed to talk about public record events? Oh, okay. No, as I was. Um, okay. So part of the uh, issue was um, Vice Mayor Lindsay was putting a signature at the end of his emails that our attorney felt to be unprofessional and uh, also our city manager. He was asked to stop several times. Also, Mayor Reynolds was doing it as well. Um, they continued to do it. We asked them to stop at the last council meeting and then it would continue to happen. We asked Mayor Reynolds to put a stop to it and it hasn't happened since, but just so we don't lie. Yes, they did, um, Mayor Reynolds, or sorry, Vice Mayor Lindsay did continue to do the misconduct behavior after we asked him to stop from the previous council meeting. But it wasn't myself. No, that. it was not Mayor Reynolds. Thank you. Just like to make sure. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor, Mr. I would like council to reconsider. Actually, no, let me back up and stop me if I'm not allowed to do this. Uh, I want to direct a question to the taxpayers. They're here. Uh, would, I mean, do you think, your opinion, don't you think that you should 
be aware of things that are being done or said that, that don't put a good light on the city? Um, I, I can ask a question. I can ask a bottle of whiskey. Possible pending litigation would be my concern regarding a lawsuit. Not one brought by anyone on this board, but in general. But that's the That's what we're discussing. <clears throat> right. The fact that somebody else talking. keeps discussing it when we're not supposed to. When we, at some point, we have to protect ourselves before something bad happens. But we can't discuss it. Not exactly at this time, but I would accept the motion to suspend rules of council so they may. Um, I would, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Wild. I would be fine with that if before, before they're done. I still have something else I'd like to say. All right. You want to go first? And then get to them, or do well, you no, to let them go first. I do have a motion to suspend rules of council. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to suspend rules of council for the audience to ask or give questions or comments. All right. Second. Mrs. Burner. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Light. Yes. Six zero. All right. If you want to step back, you please keep to five minutes. This is Manaman. And you might say your name and address. Rhonda Manaman, 317 North Adams. Did I understand correctly that there were two reminder messages that were sent? There were two what? Reminder messages that were sent. That's correct. Do we know the dates that they were sent and how were they delivered? Do we have confirmation of receipt? One was hand delivered by the manager. Hand delivered to him? To the mayor? Yeah, yes. Correct. Oh, no, she's not talking about. Are you talking about the tax issue or Mr. Lindsay's issue? Tax. I believe it's tax, correct, Ms. Manor? Mm -hmm. I thought the tax issue was the, yes, tax issue. Tax I'm not issue. sure what the Mr. Lindsay issue is. So about the taxes, yes, <coughs> the non-filing of taxes. You're talking about the tax issue. The non-filing of taxes. I thought you said that there were two reminders that had been provided. 4, 15, 11, 9, 16. Oh, 8, 9, 16, excuse me. 11, 4, 15, and 8, 9, 16. And they were provided directly to him? We have confirmation that he received them? One, Mr. Bridge answered those questions. One was hand-delivered, and the second one was? Put through the mail. Sent through the mail. Okay. And so why are we just now doing this? Why, why, was, why has there not been action taken? Um, you know, there, it sounds like there was a year or more between the reminders being sent. Because and, the, and the last reminder was sent almost two years ago. Because my ethical obligation to act is triggered by harm resulting to the city which is now I have to prosecute a group of people and I can't do that and not take action against one and treat others differently. So I have to take action against everyone. Tax and, information and is highly uh, protected and you can't you cannot disclose anyone's tax information unless you have a very specified reason. So in order to make a disclosure, you have to have a very specific harm that would result from it. And under this occasion, the city will experience harm if one person, i.e. a council member, were treated differently from other people so as a result of this, it came time where the situation had to be dealt with. And so, and so the situation now, the rubber has met the road. There's, 
there's not been action taken in the past widespread against all people who would be impacted by this. So that's why one person hasn't been singled out prior to now. And, and the reason that we're taking action against all people who are impacted the, by this is why, why are we doing this against, you know, all? The prosecution has been taken against anyone. The city has not been in a position as long as I've been law director to prosecute anyone. Okay, so why are we doing, it? why are we prosecuting or talking about prosecuting anyone now? Because the city now has financial resources okay. to start a citywide prosecution. You see where I'm going with this. If this has been going on for five years, why now? That's, that's, what, totally that's what was not clear before. Citywide. But now the city, um, as, as Randy mm -hmm. has been cleaning up mm -hmm. and moving things forward, the city engaged CCA which is a third party contractor that I mentioned earlier. That was going to be my next question. Now that we have automated records to go by, is that another thing that has helped us get all of our ducks in a row? Yes, and that was part of the plan. So they needed to get in and get records organized. And one of the benefits of engaging that outfit was to get into a position to then be moving forward with enforcement. And that's one of the benefits of engaging that organization. But they needed a year plus to have the uptick to get us there. And so they have the benefit of being able to search to know where non-compliant people are uh, because they can search um, state and federal databases to help us with non-compliance. And so they collect those records and um, organize them for us. So I was receiving information to um, start putting this on my radar a few months, um, several months back, and then um, recently, uh, very recently, I was asked to contact the city prosecutor to get forms in place to start moving forward with putting our prosecution program together for noncompliance. And so these items cannot be discussed involving council members in a private um, uh, executive session because you cannot discuss discipline of, an, of a council member in executive session. It must be done in open session. Okay. You cannot discuss the potential removal of a council member uh, or have a motion like that made at anything other than a general meeting. So. Now that we're in a position to start with the um, enforcement of the tax code, this issue had to be dealt with. It would not have been fair of, of me and my position of, as this law director to bring this issue involving one person, an elected official, to light any sooner than now because he should not be treated any differently than any other person. So, right, that, that that helps fill in some of the gaps for me. I, you know, honest mistake or whatever. I'm sorry. I I don't see any way around this. You had, you were warned two years ago. You were warned three years ago. And for the two of you on council who do not see this as misconduct that needs to be penalized. I don't understand where your heads are with this. This is clear cut to me. Sorry, that's how I feel. Sorry. So the two of you who voted no. That wasn't on Mr. Reynolds. I was on Mr. Lindsay. Yeah, that was on Mr. Lindsay, not myself. Okay. I need to get hearing aids or something, and I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. So, so where are we with this? Did we, did we vote on something regarding no. this tax issue? Yes, council instructed me to proceed with preparation of charges for a removal process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Citizen, sorry. Mr. Graham. Okay. It was issued reminders November 4th of 2015. That was mailed. I'm sorry, I'm not here. He was issued uh, reminders on November 4th of 2015. That one was mailed? The first one was hand-delivered to him. 
It was physically given to him. By? Me. Okay. And August 9th, 16, was mailed. Mailed. Was there any response to those? No phone calls, no emails, no letters? Okay. The attachment, the signature that Mr. Lindsay had on his emails, that said what again? So I had the honor to be your obedient servant. Pardon? I have the honor to be your obedient servant. And he was asked to remove that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Are you done, Mr. Graham? Yes. <clears throat> the problem I have with a lot of people in this room, they think because you're an elected official that you check your First Amendment rights at the door. I have the right to sign my emails, any and all emails I send, any way I see fit, whether you like it or not. It is my First Amendment right. Just because I got elected in 2015, I did not check my First Amendment rights at the front door. Question? Mr. Graham? Okay, a city council member is a servant of the public. Yes. Why was he asked to remove those? You have to ask somebody else. I might add that Mr. Uh, the mayor was asked to remove it also. A city council member is a servant of the public. Why was he asked to remove that signature from his emails? Well, the question is, what does that mean? <laughs> I believe Thomas Jefferson used to sign his letters like that. Is that fact to you? There's an obvious reason. Under the, first, uh, under the First Amendment, I have the right to sign my letters any way I want to, no matter who I send them to, whether it be the city manager, the law director, or Is that Ms. Carroll. Is, is, is that fact to you? If you if you follow if you follow Mrs. McKenzie, if you um, I'll get to Miss Stinkler next because we said citizens right. first. We said we'll get to you next. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm finished. That's okay. fine. So obviously this is a contentious issue. Why was it originally put on there in the first place, and why is it causing so much problem? I want to know what started this to begin with. Obviously there's an issue going on that we aren't privy to. I don't, I don't think I have it in front of me, but to answer your question, Mr. Grimm, if you go back and look at what that actually means, it's more or less, mm -hmm. can I interrupt you? I'll be, I'm about ready to tell you guys something that's highly embarrassing to myself, but I will progress this. Mr. Bridge? No. Mm. No. No, it's all right, I got it to think. Mr. Lindsay came to my office probably two months ago, two and a half months ago, and asked me my se sexual preference. As an openly gay male, I was highly offended that he did that. So when you type, and um, the whole, I have the honor to be your obedient servant, actually was a thing that Aaron Burr and uh, Hamilton, Hamilton it signed. Comes from the musical Hamilton. When they were getting ready to take each other out, shoot them and kill them. When, they, when, when Hamilton was murdered, yes. So, well, first of all, why in the hell did you go to his office and ask him such a question? And that is it. That is done. We're not discussing that much anymore. I just wanted to bring everyone up to speed. It was used with the two here. of us on every email that we received after that. So there's a reason for it. There's not just, it hasn't been like this all along. You started doing that at a certain period of Mr. time. Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Lindsay. For a certain reason. I had used it prior to Mr. Lindsay. And it was after going on a vacation to uh, Monticello, Tom Sharpson's home. It was stated, Mrs. Dinkler said that we should be more professional and when addressing the city manager through our emails, <coughs> she felt like I was blaming him for a lot of the issues that I believe that the city has. And she said, hey, don't use it. Well, Stop. this is 
this just brings up a whole nother issue though. Why did Bill Lindsay go into his office and ask him his sexual preference? That's, I can't answer that question. Either. Well, that would be, that's a serious issue. Would it be okay if he asked a woman that? <laughs> Would you ask a woman that, Bill? If I was their friend, which I thought we was friends, That's not I would a friendly have. Ma'am, I am speaking. Well, Do not interrupt. I'm disgusted with you. Mr. Lindsay. I'm done. My goodness. I'm so embarrassed. Mr. Graham. I'm not taking a shit anymore. How long has he been adding that signature to his emails? Before or after the meeting with uh, the city manager? After. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Lighty. 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 My, name, so my name is Mr. Lighty. Listen, sorry, sorry. When, when you're on council, when you're the mayor and you're the vice mayor, the expectation is that you are a servant to the community, okay? You represent all of us. And if something bothers somebody, stop. If somebody came to me and told me to stop something, I would do it. it, it it's not asking too much, and I don't want a response. I'm, I'm just talking, I don't want a response. It's not, it, it's not asking too much. And that's coming from all of us. Let's just be decent human beings up here. We have real life issues to deal with instead of this that goes on and on and on. Yes. And like there's personal things that are going on that have to be exposed. And I'm so sorry. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, you, we should look at the city manager as the city manager who's doing a good job and nothing else. Okay, all this discussion up here is nonsense and it needs to stop and it needs to stop with you two. So. <laughs> None of us are doing this, none of us. And I'm not asking for the world, I'm just asking you to please stop this behavior, this misconduct behavior. I went down the line before and I asked everybody up here if they condone it, and everyone said no. Everyone said no, and it's time for this to end. It, it really is. And now that Mr. Bridge has been so incredibly brave to disclose this information, that conduct constituted misconduct under your charge. Moving forward, the expectation for everyone up here is we represent, we are the face, I mean, let's, uh, we need to make the city proud, okay? They need to trust the people who are up here. They, they really do. They need to trust that we're doing the right thing. They need to trust that we are communicating with each other. All this, nonsense with the gun ordinance, how much money we're spending to uh, signatures on emails that people find offensive. This is high school. It, it, and it stops. And it's unacceptable, unacceptable behavior. And I, for one, don't condone it. So I would like to make a motion. Would, would you tell me the correct way to make a motion? 408. Do you have it written down? 408B.3. I'd like to make a motion to remove Vice Mayor Lindsay on Under section, four. section of the charger. Section of the charger 408 B3. B3. For misconduct. Correct, for misconduct. And state the grounds, the factual grounds. Of why? Uh, for uh, misconduct behavior towards Mr. Bridge, towards you. Uh, towards not involving all of council when spending taxpayers' money, uh, and so on. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lauer. Mr. Bridge, I just want to say thank you. I really wish you wouldn't have said that tonight. I don't think you should have ever had to say that in a public meeting, which is uncalled for. It's nobody's business. Nobody's. You've taking the city leaps and bounds, and I thank you for it. Um, I mean, we're lucky he's still here after something like that's happened. I mean, you know, we all know Bob Benner thought he was one of the greatest city managers ever, and I think he still was, is. Uh, but, you know, Randy has, has went even beyond that, and I, you know, I thank you for your service. Um, I'm gonna ask one more time, and I'll change the wording so it's not identical. I would like to make a motion for council to uh, set aside the attorney-client privileges of an executive session uh, so that What's that waiver word you said? so that the audience can hear important information that should be brought out second mrs. Berner. mrs. 
Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shaney. I didn't realize, Mr. Bridge, I'm sorry. Did that happen? Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Since this is a second vote, yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we now have temporary um, time to go over some of these things. Okay, and Lynette, please stop me if I'm about to say anything that I shouldn't say with you know the city being in a lawsuit with a shooting that we're all aware of took place. Um, more act, you know, we just went over the actions. Let me, with let me just let me just make clear for our record. You will be discussing the limited facts from the one executive session that we had, and you will be, uh, we will be having the limited waiver uh, cover this document. And did your counsel provide you the um, documents that? No, because you said you would. Let me get those to you. to wait mrs dinkler pardon me do you want us to wait until you pass out those papers yes. okay. So. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Okay. So again, we went over a handful of things tonight that you know, we're just, it's its not who and what Nicolau should be represented for in, in actions and in, in statements and, and the way you present yourself as a councilman, I think should be held much higher than the way they have been. Um, again, mm -hmm. we're all aware of the incident that took place, you know, late last year or early fall, I think, with, you know, Mr. Graham an accident up on Main Street. So I'm just, I'm just gonna, and this may sound petty, but I, I don't think it is at all. I mean, I don't think it's it's asking too much for, for someone to act a little bit more responsible when you're setting up here. Um, you know, I'll just start off on the first incident. Last year at the Heritage Flight Festival, um, a 
I'm sure many of you have been there. There was, you know, the fire fire station booth that was selling food, and, and right behind the fire station booth was uh, the the deputy's uh, EMA trailer, where they, you know, get their radios and communication and things like that. And you know, while I was up there working at the festival, uh, Chief, Assistant Chief Rick Ritter gives me a call on the radio, says you need to get down here right away. I said, okay. You know, I'm thinking, you know, maybe some kids falling or whatever. And he says, you need to have a talk with one of your council members. I said, okay, what's the problem? So I guess Mr. Lindsay is, is, is with Mr. Mr. Grimm, Andy Grimm, that is. And they're at the, at, the, at the booth, and there's three or four deputies behind the fire booth. And, Mr., you know, and this is after the shooting where I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that some legal action has started to take place at this time, possibly. Um, that Mr. Lindsay throws up his hands and yells, don't shoot, don't shoot in front of the cops. That is extremely poor taste, timing, it's not funny, it's not a joke. You know, that, I mean, it's, it's just not funny. It's not something that should be said by anyone in that audience or anyone especially up here. It is extremely poor taste and unprofessional for a councilman to be saying that with, it, it potentially could be damaging to the city. So moving forward, we go to an executive session. And I can discuss part of this, correct? Yeah. Okay. So we get into an executive session and, and our attorney says, you know, goes over some of these situations at the festival, you know, saying how unprofessional it was, it shouldn't have happened, things of that nature. And I can't remember if it was this work session or a different or an executive session, but a different one. But the, the, thought, the thought of being sued by the city or in this lawsuit could cost us a lot of money. Mr. Lindsay's comment was, so what? We have insurance. Well, I don't know about you, but regardless if you have insurance, it's going to shoot your premiums up, I would assume, a lot, especially in some sort of lawsuit that's that grand a scale. I don't think that's looking out for your tax dollars or anyone else in the city of New Palau or the city of New Palau as a whole. Um, it's, it's just not professional. Um, and then I'll go to the last thing that I would recently learned was that Mr. Lindsay drove Mr. Grimm to his attorney's office. <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Why would that take place? I mean, our attorneys instru instructed us to keep a minimum, you know, relationship here. I mean, I've talked to Andy since. I, it's usually all professional business. I ask him if, uh, you know, if he's got any photos of the festival or if he wants to come take a photo of someone who, who won a uh, yard award or whatever it may be. But to drive somebody to an attorney's office that's suing the city that you represent is just mind-boggling. It makes no sense to me. I honestly feel you guys need to be aware of some of that stuff. I mean, these aren't, I mean, it may, I don't know, maybe from out there it sounds petty. I, I don't think it does. I mean, that is extremely dangerous ground being walked on right there. It could potentially cost the city a lot of money when we've made and so much. were instructed not to discuss the laws. Exactly. When we were just, and I, I thought I covered that, maybe I didn't, that we were instructed to not be talking about this or, you know, directly dealing with people related to it in a professional manner. And I think that crosses all lines. That's all I have to say on it. I, I, you know, my opinion, I mean, that's, a, that's another misconduct. I mean, you, you shouldn't be doing those things. Council? Council, I think, Mr. Lighty. Yeah. You know, it's just being, being a dead horse, it's just, you know, we're we're here to to try to do what we think is best for the city, always, and not what's best for us or try to dig ourselves out of a hole or anything like that. You know, we've been sitting on this information for a long time, and you know, we have had opportunities to bring some of this to light, and we chose not to. We didn't we didn't want to have this conversation and this gross. I mean, it doesn't look good. It just looks like a bunch of bickering children. But unfortunately, these types of issues keep happening. And so we, we have to deal with it. And 
it doesn't give any of us pleasure up here to have these conversations. N none of us are, are happy about this. This isn't us versus anyone else. Or this is just issues that we have to deal with. And all of it, all of it is unbelievably unfortunate. But I, I just can't reiterate enough. I, I, I hope after we're finished with all this, moving forward, we conduct ourselves with a little more professionalism. That's all I have to say. So, anything else? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lowry. I just had a question for the other council members. I, mean, I know he's given you guys a chance to talk. I'm shocked we haven't heard more. I mean, does anybody else up here have any comments on what just went over? <laughs> Mr. Cook? I guess I went into this meeting this afternoon a little bit perplexed about what was going to happen. Other than Dewey, I don't think there's anybody else around here that's been around this town as long as I have. I've seen a lot of council, seen a lot of misconduct on council. But I was totally blown away by what information we were given. And I think, like Mr. Lighty has said, we were elected to this position primarily for a professional way of running this town and managing the town. And I think we've let the citizens down. I left that meeting not knowing exactly what I was going to do, but I'll tell you what, I was pretty sick when I left that meeting. That's all I've got. Council, anything else? Nothing? Members of the public? Nothing? Council? Motion to adjourn. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to withdraw that. Just real quick. Okay. Okay. We need to excuse Mr. Khan, I believe. Yeah. I believe you probably should. He was here. But he's not. Uh, Mrs. Dinkler, should we motion to excuse Mr. Cobb for missing the latter half of the meeting? Yeah, you, um, yes, and is there going to be another motion on any, are there any more, are you adding to the motion since you did a, a motion, are you adding to your motion with your new evidence or not? Good point. Um, yes, I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, so I will add to the motion. Well, no, I can't do that because it was your original motion. You would yeah. have to do so. 408B.3. So, Mr. Dinkler, do I have to read out or say out loud everything that we discussed? You can uh, make your motion uh, to address the breach of, uh, I call this the breach of fiduciary duty. Uh, the city regarding the Andy Grimm litigation. Well, you can just make a separate motion and you can just say you're adding to the order okay. of the motion. Uh, I, like to, uh, I like to make a motion to add to, let's say, the 408 B3, um, the breach of, what was it? Fiduciary. Fiduciary duty of the Andy Grimm. Okay, with regard to? With regard to Vice Mayor Lindsay. Okay, and with regard to Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Okay. All right, and uh, Mayor Reynolds, are you requesting a hearing? Yes. Okay, Mr. Lindsay, are you requesting a hearing? I will confer with my attorney first. Okay. I think they need a second on Aaron's motion. Go ahead. Tell me. Okay. And then you want to motion to excuse Mr. Cobb. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Right. Make a motion to excuse Mr. Excuse Mr. Cobb for the I guess half hour. Second. 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 Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. 
Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Leidy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Chammy? Yes. Excuse me, 6-0. Anything else? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Lowry. I believe just for sake of audience, if I'm remembering right, I'm, I know you had it open. But the just for procedure wise, there's a 30 day time limit on setting a uh, hearing, I believe. Yes. I'm correct. So okay. just so you know. Council, anything else? Make a motion to adjourn. All right, we are adjourned.